Welcome to the Channel for Grace. Jago Bend will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like, and we hope you enjoy the broadcast. Welcome to the Channel for Grace. Jago Bend will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like, and we hope you enjoy the broadcast. Welcome to the Channel for Grace. Jago Bend will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like, and we hope you enjoy the broadcast. Satnam and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jai Gobind and this is your channel for grace. Thank you guys so much for being here live and thank you to those of you that are watching the replay. We're going to talk about the Scorpio full moon that is happening next Tuesday and it's kind of crazy to end eclipse season with a full moon in Scorpio, but this is what we have to work with. So welcome into the broadcast. And before we dive in, I do want to share a couple of things that are really exciting. And um, and then we'll go right into the astrology. So my life from this eclipse has been insane, just crazy. I have literally no words to describe the insane changes and shifts that are happening right now in my life and all of the intense like fears that are just showing up and we are having to face just fear after fear after fear. I see my Wi-Fi is acting up now. Wonderful. Um, so it's been quite a journey. I am like literally engulfed in the experience and it has been, yeah, just wild. So anyways, I'm excited to be back because I literally had to cancel. Yeah, it was like a a week ago. I had to cancel a lot of the shows because the power had gone out and the power is still out. The It's, it's like too much for me to go into. I'm literally uh, going live from a um, generator right now. And yes, this is life for me right now. If you're in any of my classes, you kind of have the backstory of what's been going on, or maybe you've talked to me personally. But yeah, there's just a lot. So one thing that I do want to say is that if you feel, hello, Ella, welcome in. If you feel like things are just insane and like going super fast, not slowing down, you're not alone. And this is the energy that we are being sort of like washed over with. And the eclipse season was a huge activator of that. But there is another big conjunction that's happening on Saturday, right before the full moon, that's Jupiter conjunct Uranus in Taurus. 
and that one's pretty activating it's like electric you know jupiter expands everything that he touches and for him to conjunct with uranus in the sign of taurus is seriously shaking things up um in the earth plane like at the level of the earth and it's going to feel like an earthquake <laughs> is literally happening underneath you which is exactly what my experience is right now and you have to like hang on and do your best to find balance and harmony so it's definitely a lot i'm going to put my headphones on um it's definitely overwhelming it's definitely like okay i don't know what's going on i don't know what's going to happen we just have to keep um, trusting as much as we can um, the direction to which we are going. And remember that the the year, the astrological year has just begun. You know, airy season um, and the spring equinox launched us into a whole new, basically 365 um, days of the magic of the story of the hero. And this is actually a story that I talk about in my book, um, Seasons and Stargates. So if you have not gotten your copy of this book, I go through each of the seasons and I tell you what the season means, the general themes. I go through the astrology of the season. I give you a detailed list with dates, events, and descriptions of the major transits that are happening during that month. And then I even go into the new and the full moon of that month and what they mean and what energies are going to bring into our lives. We are about to enter into Taurus season. And in our Starseed membership, we are working, we're using this book and using the workbook. There's an embodiment workbook and there is um, the, you know, the, the copy, the actual physical copy um, of the annual guide, and it's for the entire year. And so we're focusing in the Starseed membership on moving through the seasons with awareness and consciousness. And so we did our um, Aries season workshop right before Aries season started. The sun is about to enter into Taurus. So we're literally moving into the second season of the year can you believe it's already been 30 days? <laughs> like we're at 29 degrees of Aries right now and it is intense. The whole day for me today has just, I've just exhausted. Like there's so much going on. I've been doing like double shifts, like working on, um, we're building a house right now. Like literally me and my husband are the only ones doing all the work. He's doing more than I am. I'm literally like his assistant, but we are building a house and we're having to move into it before it's finished. And um, and literally, it's all happening at the same time. And then on top of it, of course, I've got all the stuff, the broadcast, the shows, the Mighty Network, the global community. And so I am just like so exhausted, literally have no time for um, myself or my self-care right now. And I'm just like kind of trusting that this is just a major transition period for us and that, of course, everything is going to be fine on the other side. But you may be experiencing the same exact thing in just a different way in your own personal life. And I have been talking to people who feel exactly that. It's like it's just all these things hitting at the same time. But the sun is about to enter into Taurus. And so we are going to the energy is going to shift and the sun enters Taurus tomorrow. So Taurus is about being grounded. Taurus is about moving slow. Taurus is about having a little bit more stability instead of like Aries, which is very fiery and passionate and very action oriented. So the energy is going to shift tomorrow and we are going to be doing a special Taurus season workshop in the Starseed membership where we are going to look at where is the sun transiting our own personal chart I usually do like mini readings for everybody when we have when we're in that workshop and we're going to look at that. We're going to do the journal. We're going to work with the embodiment workbook, um, going to do a card reading and just talk about what we need to focus on for Taurus season, but not just collectively, but really what I want in the membership is to give you guys an opportunity 
to walk the ancient Atlantean astrological path, the wisdom path, which is basically based off of our astrology and the the wheel, the astrological wheel, but it happens in a certain space in our own chart. And when you know that, and when you're aware of that, hello, Valerie, welcome in. You have the ability to flow through it with consciousness and awareness and hopefully be able to find, you know, what you, your purpose, like what you truly want for yourself as we move through the energies. So I welcome you. I invite you to join us for this special Taurus season workshop that is happening on Saturday. I believe it's Saturday afternoon. I am going to be sending out an email um, tomorrow. So it is at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And um, in the Starseed membership, and the cool thing about the Starseed membership is that you get one week for free and it's like my most content-filled program besides the Moon Goddess training, <laughs> which we are in right now and holy moly, it's been a wild freaking ride. Um, I'm also doing the Starseed Astrology School, which has been so fun. Um, we are going through the astrology wheel and looking at the different like signs and what constellations we find within each sign, what stargates we find within within each sign, what that means, what starseed families we're connecting to, how that do we have these stargates, uh, these starseed energies markings in our chart and we look at the like cosmology we look at the mythology of the stories we look at the actual constellations the actual fixed stars in the night sky it has been so freaking fun um, to do the starseed astrology school and basically you are learning in that class how to do starseed readings how to interpret a chart via the lens of starseed astrology so if you've ever wanted to do that please come join us there's replays of all the classes we're about um we're about to be halfway done so we're not even we may be halfway done anyways <laughs> there's still a few weeks left i lost track of everything because last week was just crazy um, but come join us. It's so freaking fun. We're, we meet on Fridays in a Zoom webinar. And um, yeah, I just basically like present all the information and we just have a freaking blast. So um, thank you for that. Always check the description for all like workshops and special events that are happening. And I also want to invite you to download my free moon astrology guide, which I actually updated so it's been like revised and it looks really nice and um, you get it when you uh, sign up for my newsletter and I send out a weekly moon magic report like the horoscope for the week comes out on Wednesday mornings and I basically in that email I let you know what events are happening for the week. I do a lot of free events um, and so they all happen in our global community. So come join us, create your free account in our um, global community. And um, you are going to have so much fun being a part of it. So let us transition here. I'm going to do my um, shared screen and we are going to actually look at the book that is out, Seasons and Stargates, and the chapter of Taurus season, which includes the astrology of the um, full moon in Scorpio, which is what we're going to be looking at today. I will be showing the chart in a moment, but I just wanted to kind of go through this information, which is really helpful because the more information that you have about a specific um, uh, new or full moon, the, the, the easier it is to understand how it will be affecting you um, in your life. So the most important thing about this um, full moon is that it is officially closing the eclipse portal. Now the portal happens um, opens up with the full moon before and then it closes with the full moon after. And then for six months, we work with the energy and we move through the lessons, 
Um, we in integrate everything, we experiment. So think of, because this eclipse season and because the nodes are in Aries and Libra, Aries season has been a huge part of our initiation into our new astrological year. And so this um, initiation is marking our journey for the whole year, not just the next six months, but technically with eclipses, we're working with six month cycles. So the portal is open from full moon to full moon. This full moon in Scorpio is closing the portal, but the energy will we will be working with for the next six months. So another really important thing to think about is what are the big themes that you have been working on in your own personal life with with um, during airy season, during these eclipses. So these last three weeks have been like there something has happened in your life and it's like focused on like spe- a specific area in your life and it has initiated something that you are continue you're going to continue to work with. So, Think about that because you want to be aware of like, what are the seeds that I planted? (laughs) You know, how is these things that are showing up in my life right now going to be with me? I'm going to bring them with me like to interpret and integrate and like move through throughout the rest of the six months. What is, what are these things that I'm bringing? And you, and you just look at what's going on in your life. That's all you have to do and become aware because those are themes, right? So for me, it's like huge shift in home, um, family. It's uh, also like like huge um, transition in my life, um, getting used to completely new like way of life and also embracing um, a new experience. And it's a big deal for me personally. That's what's happening in my life. It has to do with like home and family. Now, Aries, interestingly enough for me in my chart is in my 10th house of career and life path, but also purpose and mission. So this move for me is a big part of the transition and the um, activation for me in terms of my career and how I show up for the world. And I think that it's going to transition me into um, being more involved with like in-person events and things like that. And so I'm just kind of giving you an example of like what this can look like. But in the moment, it's just crazy and wild and unpredictable and insane and all over the place. And it's not good. doesn't feel good. It feels uncomfortable. It's so many things have been coming up. It's scary, the transition. So you are going through this too in your life in some way, shape, or form. What is that? Tap into that. So full moon in Scorpio is going to um, activate for us these energies. The stargates that are being um, magnified, highlighted during this moon is the Centaurus stargates. And the Centaurus stargates are all about, they are these like beautiful shamanic frequencies that invite in the the very famous sort of death ritual, right? It's letting go so that you can make space for um, something new. There is a death that is happening and it's a symbolic death. Maybe there's a part of you, there's an aspect of you that is dying so that a new you can emerge. Maybe there's a a phase of your life that is ending so that a new phase can begin. Maybe there is a relationship that is ending because space needs to be made for something new, um, for a new relationship in your life, in any area of life. And so there is a death and then a rebirth. That's the energy of Centaurus. It's the the symbolic death ritual that that clears the energy and then you step into a new you, um, a new life, all of that. So it's a big deal, right? Just that those star seeds, those star seed families um, will bring that energy and make it so. So think about that. The chakra that this full moon activates is the chakra below the feet. 
And in ancient Atlantis, the three chakras that form the trinity are Ham, Het, Hum. Ham being the chakra above the head, Het being the high heart chakra, and Hum being the chakra below the feet. These three chakras are like the breathing of the being. It's also the way that spirit descends into matter. Ham is spirit, Het is soul, and Hum is body. It's uh, um, it's like the men, the mind, the mental energy, the the heart, and then the uh, manifestation of it. It's energy, by vi- it's vibration, energy, and then matter. So we're dealing with the matter, we're dealing with the body, we're dealing with the physical manifestation of it. And the chakra below the feet has to do with how well we are anchored <laughs> onto the earth, which is really cool because this also can um, call in a groundedness. And it is Taurus season when the full moon in Scorpio will always happen during Taurus season. So we are being called to root down into the earth so that we can expand upwards and outwards and grow. Like the tree has to put its roots down in order to grow taller. Like the bigger the tree, the bigger the roots and the deeper the roots. And so that's another interesting like energy that's coming into this. Like how grounded are you? Like below your feet, you're also walking on the earth, you know, the earth is below your feet and a big part, hello Lish, welcome in. A big part of this energy is about what what's your path? You know, what path are you on in your life? But really is, are you anchored and, and how are you anchoring yourself and are you anchoring yourself and in which ways? And that will give you a lot of insight into how to interpret this energy for you. Hello, Rosa, welcome in. The system of the body, according to the ancient Atlanteans, um, by the way, if you're like wondering what are these things, this chakra below the feet, the excretory system, um, you can, um, I highly recommend you check out my moon goddess training because this is where I teach all of these concepts. So system of the body is the excretory system, which is the system (coughs) that basically uh, releases the waste. (laughs) So... Literally, the waste is released through the excretory system. So what happens, think about it in your physical body. Everything has a um, spiritual connection, an energetic connection, and a um, physical connection. And you can learn about the connection um, by thinking about what does the system do in my physical body and how do I what does this teach me? What does this tell me about myself? So um, the excretory system is the system that releases the waste. And when you don't release waste in your body, you are going to um, keep the toxic waste that will then seep. This is like so gross, but it will seep into your digestive system and you're like you'll be toxic literally you can't keep that waste it has to be released and that's the lesson it's like if you're not letting go of what does not freaking serve you what has to be released if you're resisting that you are going to like feel sick you know like literally so it is a big deal and um those are the energies that this full moon activates. Now, in terms of the genes keys, this um, full moon activates the 28th gene key. And in terms of the human design gate, it activates the 28th gate. I do a whole uh, broadcast on the the human design and that's going to happen Saturday night. So make sure you check that out. Today, we're going to talk about the 28th gene key. But before we do that, um, let's take a look at the actual chart. And what I can do here is 
make sure that I am writing on it and I can literally, you can literally see what's going on. So this full moon is um, happening at four degrees, 19 minutes of Scorpio. You can tell it's a full moon because the sun is making an, an exact opposition. Um, it could be uh, four, uh, four minutes, 18 seconds. Um, I mean, four degrees, 18 minutes. Sorry, <laughs> my brain right now. <laughs> Um, anyways, so that's, that's how you know it's a full moon that's happening. This is the degree that it's happening at. And so what are some of the things that are, that are going on? First of all, Pluto is ruled by, um, Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. And so we need to pay attention to what is Pluto doing during this moon? Well, guess what? He is literally making pretty much an exact, not exact, two degrees away, square, so a T-square to the moon. Squares are challenging energies that come in that need resolution. A square will ask you to resolve something. What does Pluto represent? Pluto is the planet of li ultimate liberation. But the liberation comes through facing the shadows doing the transmutation work, going through the underworld. And it's interesting because right now Venus is also um, in her immersion phase. She's now um, invisible in the sky and she is getting ready to make her next star point, to make her conjunction with the sun. But that's not going to happen until she's in Gemini and the sun is in Gemini. So Gemini season, we'll see a Venus star point, a really beautiful evening that, where she becomes the evening star. But right now she's even going through the underworld. And, you know, Venus rules Taurus and the sun will be in Taurus for this moon. So she is also important to think about. It's like, what sign is the moon in? What sign is the sun in? You've got Pluto ruling the full moon and Venus ruling the sun energy relationships. So we are going through the underworld. We Hello, Carmelola, welcome in. We are literally walking through, as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know that song, <laughs> Gangster's Paradise. Um, but yeah, so we're walking through the underworld with Pluto. He's on earthing deep emotions. He is bringing things up that were um, once buried and we are getting a chance to emotionally move through the energy, face the emotion, face the fear, face the shadow so that we can change and um, evolve so that we can mutate. <laughs> you know, the mutation will only happen when you surrender to the change and you surrender to the shift. So this is heavy, you guys. This is heavy AF. The other really big thing that's happening is right over here. Uranus and Jupiter are conjunct. They're making the exact conjunction on Saturday. And this full moon is on Tuesday. Hello, Dawn. So this is a conjunction that has not happened in Taurus since 1941. And big deal. <laughs> um, there is so much that this is bringing up collectively. Like to have these kind of like outer planet conjunctions that really bring more collective shift, but the collective shift affects the personal life the personal um, shift happens also. But these are very collective energies. So anything that Jupiter touches, he's going to expand. Uranus is in Taurus. That's what he's expanding. What is Uranus in Taurus? Uranus in Taurus is like the earthquake that hits and shakes everything up. It's the re, it's like you have to like redo it life has to begin again. You know what I mean? Um, things change, things shift dramatically. 
all of a sudden, unexpectedly, there's no warning, right? There's no warning when an earthquake comes. Even all of like the systems that happen um, to sort of predict earthquakes, they don't really predict earthquakes, you know? Like there's really no way to predict these kind of Uranus type of changes, but yet they are here and they are a huge part of what we're experiencing right now in the world, in the collective. The earth is changing. Taurus is the earth. Uranus is also lightning strikes, (laughs) storms, you know? Um, And Jupiter is literally magnifying that energy. So it is a huge deal that this conjunction is happening during the eclipse season right before the eclipse portal closes. So it's like it's within the portal. So expect the unexpected and expect these things, which they're already here. You know, these conjunctions, they don't they don't just like happen at one moment and then they go away. This has been coming into exactness for a while. So it has been part of the energy already, but the fact that it's the exact conjunction is happening during this time is definitely a big deal. Um, And so um, what's really important is that um, we have to remember that this is an energy that is kind of underlying everything that's going on. Big shifting, big changing, big transformation, unexpected things, and they're kind of crazy. They're kind of all over the place. And they're un, they're uplifting in a way that's... No, it's not uplifting. It's They're uprooting. It's like uprooting us on the planet, humanity, on the earth, and then us individually. So it's a big deal. And it's a big deal too because with Taurus season, all the planets are going to pass by Uranus. And they're going to feel like that effect as well. Uh, Bernadine, hello, welcome in. She says, I'm loving this time, this evolution. It feels like resonance I can breathe in. Nice, I love that. Hello, Maricela. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil for you are with me. I love that. Hello, Jeanette, welcome in. Yeah, so super huge, big deal that this conjunction is also happening around the time of this moon. We also have a lot going on here in Aries. We've got Venus, Chiron, Mercury, and the North Node. And these are heavy energies that were present with the eclipse, the total solar eclipse in Aries. But Venus is relationships. Chiron is healing. So healing relationships. Mercury retrograde of all things. And Mercury is actually going to go direct um, very soon. And so we'll finally... Like if anyone tried to resolve crazy communication stuff during Mercury retrograde, like that's not good. (laughs) Like Mercury retrograde is not for like hashing things out in that way. Mercury retrograde is for personal reflection and for pausing. Um, It's not the best time to like reach out to someone and like hash something out. Like it is not going to be well received, especially with Aries, dude, that Aries energy can be like just crazy fiery and doesn't even, you know, doesn't think, um, only reacts. So Mercury is still retrograde. So we have to keep doing our best not to like say the, you know, the thing that, you know, will hurt somebody's feelings or whatever. Um, but we are healing. It's all about healing. It's all about processing. It's all about integrating right now within ourselves learning about ourselves, learning to understand who we are at a deeper level. So all of it is basically, you know, holding this very powerful frequency. And then over here in Pisces, you've got these planets, Mars, Saturn, Mars, and Neptune, the two malefics, and then Neptune, the ruler uh, of Pisces. So magnifying this energy that can definitely feel slightly chaotic or maybe a lot chaotic. Um, you don't know if you're, if you're in a dream or if you're having a nightmare kind of an energy. 
um, intuition can be very magnified. You are going through a very powerful spiritual uh, integration and understanding of things. And so it's all showing up to you via the language of like dreams and art and um, everything that can can definitely bring up the I don't really know what this means. I don't really know what that means. What's going on? Like all of those energies um, can be a big part of that strong Pisces stellium. But we are being drawn to the spiritual. We're being drawn to the wisdom that comes through our experiences in a spiritual way. And that's definitely a, a beautiful thing that is happening at the same time that this eclipse is happening. So here's what I wrote in the book about the what this means. Pluto is going to unearth emotions that were buried deep within our subconscious. However, we will feel like we have the determination to struggle through what comes up so that we can move through it. Your mind is trying to focus on the future and so are your desires. But what you see is that everything is unfolding in a way that is uncovering the wounds you have yet to heal or are currently healing. You knew that once you jumped off the ledge with the last eclipse, that you would be initiated into a powerful journey. And now the journey begins with you facing your shadows. Your intuition is guiding you to understanding all of this from a spiritual perspective, and you should trust it. Hello, Alejandra, welcome in. Your higher self is already guiding you, but are you even listening? We are still under the wild energy of unpredictability and surprises, so stay on your toes, ready for anything. So, (laughs) kind of crazy, right? Um, And so now what we get to do is talk about the gene key that um, this full moon is activating, which is a really, really powerful one. It's the one that connects in human design to the 38th gene key, and and it creates the channel of struggle. And part of struggling through life, and we'll talk more about this on Saturday when we do, when we talk about the human design gate but part of the struggle of life has to do with like knowing what, like why are we struggling through things, you know? Why are we moving um, forward? Like what is this, what does this all mean, right? Like I'm sure a huge part of you is wondering and asking yourself like, what does it mean, you know? Like there's that meme that goes around that says everything happens for a reason, but have you ever uh, I wondered what was the reason, you know, we're looking for meaning and, and, and we know that life is a struggle. We know that life is not like easy path. We know there's light and dark. We know there's like a lot of things. Um, but the key is, you know, are we, um, are we finding purpose? And are we finding meaning within it? Because if we're not, then what's the point? So that's what the gene key tells us about with this moon. It's the 28th gene key. It moves from the shadow of purposelessness to the gift of totality to the city of immortality. And it's described, when I read this, I thought it was the funniest thing ever. The descriptive phrase for the 28th gene key is embracing the dark side. (laughs) I was like, you have got to be kidding me on that, right? Like after all this stuff that we've been going through, embracing the dark side. Okay, universe. But here it is. Let's read, and I'm going to be reading from the gene keys book, Embracing Your Higher Purpose by Richard Rudd. The 28th city, immortality. 
the true nature of the beast. Since the beginning of time, humanity has wondered about the possibilities of immortality. Alchemists have long sought the precious elixir vitae, the spiritual essence that when drunk will restore eternal youth. Modern medicine has in its turn extended the human lifespan and will probably continue to do so. With the promise of the new genetic science, many scientists are already talking about being able to expand human life indefinitely. When we think of immortality, we also think in terms of the soul. Certainly the dream of the great world religions is that our soul will survive death and live on in an eternal dimension or heaven realm. The fear built into the lower frequencies of the 28th jinky also give rise to the opposite side of this duality, the notion of hell and eternal damnation in the underworld. The 28th city has very little to do with such things, which are largely projections of the lower frequencies of this jinky and its shadow. It is true, however, that the human genetic matrix does not does contain the seed of physical immortality, although our current biophysical vehicle will not properly support this transformation. It might even be possible to alter our genetics to make this current vehicle immortal, but the consequences will not be pleasant. To create a new body out of the fear of the 28th shadow means that the undwelling awareness will not have evolved naturally to suit such a body. Such a being would be a genetic freak. (laughs) And even though the body might never die, the awareness within could not cope with such a concept remaining rooted in the fear of death. Just because a body can genetically go on living doesn't eliminate the possibility of death from other causes. Instead of taking away the fear of death, such a circumstance would more than likely increase the fear of death to obsessive proportions. Without the grounding of the acceptance of your dark side, the results of such an occurrence would very likely be catastrophic. When the human mind imagines the concept of immortality, it does so from within its own limitations. The mind can only conceptualize something within time. So it sees immortality as time that simply stretches into the future forever. This is why the mind cannot really grasp what immortality means. True immortality is actually the cessation of time altogether. This is the only way to escape death, to live so entirely within the present moment that death cannot exist. This is why the gift of totality must eventually lead to such a state, whereas totality means to live to the utmost Immortality means to die into the everlasting moment. To do this, your sense of identity and separateness must first die, leaving only life in its place. Once there is no localized center of awareness, there is no death because there is nothing to die. Only consciousness remains, moving from one form to another endlessly. In Christian mythology, the embodiment of fear is expressed through the Antichrist, Lucifer, the embodiment of evil. There are some curious secrets hiding within this myth. The destiny of Lucifer at a mythic level is actually to become one with the Godhead. Lucifer was originally the favorite and strongest of God's angels. In mythology, the strongest is always chosen to fall and forget his true nature. This is the higher mythic meaning behind betrayal. This wonderful anthropomorphism contains the great secret of the meaning of evil and the dark side itself. Evil is simply everything about life that has not yet been accepted and embraced. Whoa, The only misinterpretation of the old legends is seen in the battles between good and evil in which good triumphs. The ancient symbols and images of dragons being killed is a projection from the 28th shadow. 
In the end, Archangel Michael, who represents good, must embrace Lucifer in his arms rather than killing him. Only in this way can he fulfill the myth by transmuting Lucifer's true essence into a force even higher than himself, thus revealing Lucifer as God himself. Whoa! This is how the Christian myth should really read. Many other more ancient myths from other cultures also describe the very same dynamic. The city of immortality requires that the individual surrender him or herself into his own deepest fears and in dying, he or she is reborn as pure consciousness. Such a being realizes their true purpose as the purpose of life itself, to live in the immortal truth of its own nature beyond time and form. When a being attains this state through the 28th city, they take on a particular mythology. Their specific gift is to highlight the fears of others wherever they go. This is simply an aspect of their awakening operating through their genetics. Thus, they are said to have a gift of casting out demons because this is precisely what their aura does. Through its grace, it highlights the darker, unaccepted aspects of one's nature and absorbs them into its deathless state of consciousness. As all Siddic states are really one and the same state, this is an aspect common to them all, but it carries specific mythological power in the 28th city's destiny. Finally, a few words about the future role of the 28th city. As we stated earlier, this city contains the seed of the manifestation of immortality into form. After all the cities have dawned in humanity, and our collective body has begun to transmute its future form, the 60th city will flower and the laws that hold our world together will dissolve. At that time, elements of our future vehicle will coalesce and begin to form another kind of vehicle to house the higher consciousness of humanity. In this vehicle, the 28th city will finally come to fruition, and in doing so, it will synthesize the animal soul of Gaia with the human soul thus making an immortal body. Herein lies the secret behind all the codes within our mythologies where man and beast are combined as one. Let me just say one thing. The Centaurus star gates that this eclipse activates, the centaur is half man, half animal. The animal kingdoms of our planet constitute an awareness that already operates in the immortal field and whose sacrifice suggests an evolution even higher than our own. At a physical level, man must absorb his entire animal nature into himself in order for its true purpose to be shown. Only then will will we see for the first time the true nature of the beast. Whoa, this is crazy. This was intense. So we are, we are being invited with this full moon to move out of the shadow of purposelessness. And if I talk about just that, I mean, in in, in at least to immortality, because true purpose is like just existing for existing itself. And then being so in the present moment that it's immortal. Um, So it's kind of a really wild one. It's really powerful one. And What I would say, if at this moment you feel like you lack purpose, it's only because you are lacking perspective. It's not that you're lacking purpose because we are literally always living out our purpose. We can be in the shadow frequency of our purpose and feel like we don't have purpose or we can be in the gift energy and feel like we have purpose and we're like, we know what we're doing. We know where we're going and that gives us like, motivation. But if you feel like you don't have purpose, you just don't have perspective because you are always living out your purpose. There is no way not to do it. Yes, there are some ways that you can choose and use your willpower to like evolve. But really, if you think about the perspective of the soul that has chosen to have the experiences that it has so that it can learn and grow and evolve, then you see the magic of the fact that you 
you're always living out your purpose and your destiny because you exist, because you're here on this planet, because you have like an astrology chart, because your chart's very detailed and specific and it shows you exactly your path. It shows you exactly how to follow. It gives you a map, you know, like all of these things. It's like we have the map. We just need to like follow our inspiration, follow our strategy and our authority if you want to talk in human design terms. And when we do that, we are automatically living in purpose. When we are, you know, living in our not self, we're going to feel like we don't have purpose. But the truth is that we're always in it. In terms of like how this gene key describes purpose, it's like there is no such thing as purposelessness. There is only like lack of meaning. So I guess in a way you could say that this full moon is asking us to find meaning in our lives, to let go of like the fear that our life has no meaning because, oh my God, like there's so much going on. It's actually miracle after miracle and magical things after magical things. Our perspective is what changes, but we're still here we're still living. And if you're living, you have a purpose. So you're moving in that direction, whether in the shadow or the gift. So it's a, it's a, it's an interesting perspective to think about, but it's kind of what's coming through for me. Yes. Super intense, super intense. So look to find more meaning, feel complete is what this moon is asking us. Can you find a way to feel complete, to feel, to find the meaning in your life. And if you feel like you're lacking purpose, just think about a different way of seeing your situation. What's the other perspective? What's the other dimension that will see what you're going through in a completely different way? And then you'll be like, oh my God, I am in purpose. I am in my, in my purpose. So it's beautiful that this is the full moon that is closing the portal of the eclipses. And then here we go, right? So get ready for Taurus season. It starts tomorrow. Come join us in the Starseed membership. We're going to be doing our special Taurus season workshop this Saturday. I'll be sending out an email tomorrow reminding everybody and inviting those of you that are not part of the membership to join us because it is so amazing and so much fun. And we'll be talking about the all the energies of this season and how to continue walking our path <laughs> and we'll do a little check-in too about what the heck just happened with Aries season because that was crazy so thank you guys all for being here I will be back um on Saturday night to do the full moon human design reading so I hope to see you there right here on YouTube and also at our full moon celebration next week that will also be happening here on YouTube. Remember, it's okay if things are crazy. It's okay if things are unpredictable. It's okay if things change and then they change again and then they change again. Just do your best to keep moving forward. Find your flow, surrender, and we'll all learn the deeper lesson that's wanting to unfold here in our lives. Right. Satnam and I'll see you again very soon.